a universe. You know, <clears throat> I wonder what it is <clears throat> that puts us in a frame of mind to consider our current effort, output, result, impact, whatever our immediate influence over our reality is, to be subpar. How is it that the moment I'm having is the kind of, hmm, observational perch on which I can look down and say, not good enough, should have been better. Quit while you're behind. And is that a, does that have a purpose? Is it of use to know when you're doing your C minus level worst? I don't know. Because, again, it's not that yesterday was a day I tried to take off. In fact, yesterday we recorded 66, or roughly 66 minutes, maybe even more overall. I'm sure it was closer to two hours, but there was a 66 minute recording of which I was ready to upload and thought, okay, I should re-listen to this because my audio techniques have been suspect. And thank goodness I did, because for at least 40 of those 66 minutes, the um, recording was unlistenable again and uh, for reasons that are all my fault and I treat that as two indicators that I need to one shorten shit up agreed and two proactively establish my recording precision as much as I know how to do that, with every single time I hit the record button or the pause button. Anything less is, um, again, a lesson that if I haven't learned after yesterday, well, perhaps it's time to go play golf. And uh, why has it been so mediocre? to try to enunciate or expand upon the numerous traps that I've fallen into with a lot of my, at least, co-Americans of thinking I know something because I've been told that's how it is by somebody authoritative enough. I have no even reflexive instinct to question it. I believe that has eroded to a significant degree. And not that I question everything. But now, when large, yeah, why is it that way, points cross my conscious mind. They aren't dismissed as something anomalous that regardless of what the answer is, it must be answered or else I would know that anomaly existed. Um, no, no, not anymore. Because the anomalies, well, they're, they're the sort of WTFs that I know, had I been given the information in a room with just myself to digest, would have been on my list of, okay, yeah, I read that whole knowledge of what humankind has come up with according to the libraries of the world. Now let me ask these questions. Who built the pyramid? I don't see an answer in our history that says who built the pyramid. Because who we're ascribing it to, 
there is not a shred of evidence in their own written, which they're the ones who came up with hieroglyphics. So if you don't think they considered uh, documenting the existence of their reality as critical, well, there's nothing in any of it that tells us how they did the pyramid. Because they didn't build it. At some point, when you look at the evidence, the answer that is the obvious one is the one. Okay. Yeah, yeah, How's that obvious? It can't be obvious. There's nobody else to do it. There's literally nobody else to do it. If it wasn't done, according to the pharaohs of roughly... Jesus Christ back to 3,000 years before him, 4,000, 5,000, determine what you will, but let's say roughly the 3,000 to 2,500, 2,500 to 2,000, that thousand year period of innovation is enough of a civilization ascendancy to have done everything the Egyptians did. And then carried that into the time of the Romans, etc., etc. But the weird part is, even if you buy into the timeline, even if you accept that the lack of documentation of any kind of construction or even the manpower, literally, to coordinate the project that it was, to get all of the stone cut, carved, moved, placed, and correctly fitted into the structure itself, just the project management itself of how to use restrooms for all those people. Seriously, where'd they all take a dump? There is so much to think about that to just write it off as, well, they had slaves and some ropes and some ramps, And more slaves. (sighs) Okay. Well, what mysteries are left, even if you accept the timeline, include things like the amount of material that had to get moved, the distance the materials had to get moved, the coordination of the materials into the positions they inevitably were in, and the technique used to achieve any of it. These are all things that are unproven. So, those are some of the mysteries still to be solved in our historical record. It's not like we expect to know everything. This planet has a spotty historical record because, well, because we keep warring with each other or something, right? We keep burning down cities. We keep destroying that which would normally be available to know. Why don't we know how the Egyptians built the pyramids? Why? Especially if they used tools from the Bronze Age. Why has nobody of the 21st century figured it out? Well, because they didn't do it. Now, that doesn't mean aliens did it. It doesn't mean aliens didn't do it. The strange historical record that Americans have been trained to think is just nonsense fairy tales, but is considered the ancient history of the region that is India, including Nepal and Pakistan and that whole area, has a history. And the archaeological record, by the way, have you seen what the Ellora Caves look like? That's carved out of a mountain of granite. How'd they do it? How'd they do it? Where'd they put all the rock that got removed? Nobody knows. How do you remove, I think it's 500 million million cubic tons of rock? (laughs) How do you remove all that and nobody knows where you put it? And instead of these fascinating unknowns, these ways that history truly gives us question marks to keep you up at night, 
Well, our reaction now is to classify, censor, close down, and sanitize the record of anything like this because the paradigm we're going to go with is the one we got. Well, the one we got is full of holes. It's wrong. It's wrong like how wrong it is for me to keep that on my phone. It's wrong in its underpinnings of physics. It's wrong in its underpinnings of history. It's wrong in its underpinnings of sociology. It's wrong in its underpinnings of, um, what would you call that which is our species integration? Anthropology? Um, humanity? We have been undersold. You have been told that you are a less fit, less deserving, less coordinated, less integral, less essential, less magical, less purposeful, less destined being than you are. And you believed it. I did too. I'm not here to judge. Oh, did I crack my phone? Oh, nope. Good. Boy, that was one of those scratches that seriously looked like a crack. But, <clears throat> I will crack my phone eventually. Don't be surprised if I do it in this call. This call? I'm not talking to anyone on the phone. I hope not. If so, I'm so sorry. It's your turn to talk. Nope, nobody's up. Okay. Instead, talking to the universe like I have been lacklusterly trying to do for 36 hours. Well, it's important, again, for me to get something down. Because I know tomorrow I'll have more to say than I can get out of my mouth. And most of what it is, I'll have either thought through to a point of absurdity that I'll walk back later. Or I'll have said previously in another form. Or won't actually be as important as I think it is when I listen to it 24 minutes later. And that's okay. Because the long haul process of this is what matters. I'm okay with having a day like today where I don't think I've made progress. I think my head feels cloudy. It feels uncertain and it feels specifically lacking in spark. I don't feel like I can assimilate any information into something that is insightful or even solution oriented. It just all feels dull. As if somebody sprayed me with a shroud of disinterest. A way of keeping me from caring to solve the next problem. And I haven't given up hope. But I certainly don't feel energized. I have no... I have no fuel in my tank or something. I even have what I would consider a fairly decent list of ways I think I've been trained to think and ways I've come to realize that that's wrong. I do know that we are trained to think people can't keep secrets, especially big ones. Well, that's wrong. I know we've been trained to think that a growth in comfort will equal a growth in happiness. A growth in security will equal a growth in happiness. A growth in safety will equal a growth in happiness. But no, no. In fact, those are in, <laughs> those are negative reinforcements because it's the threat of safety and the unhappiness that cooperates that we get drilled into us. But nonetheless, none of that's right. Happiness is, <laughs> unfortunately, happiness is a decision as much as anything. Happiness is always available. That's the problem. People don't have to lose happiness ever. You never, ever have to be more than 
a mental adjustment away from putting yourself into a, a great mood. And maybe that's why I'm always late for work. <laughs>